Coach Brandon here, and today we'll be covering some of the new and exciting research into creatine. But first, we need to understand that creatine is an essential brain compound. Many scientists and researchers are now suggesting that it aids in cognitive function by improving its, uh, your brain's energy supply along with neuroprotection. A few more facts before we get started. The brain uses 20% of our body's total energy. The brain requires significant ATP turnover to uh, maintain membrane potential along with signaling capacity. And creatine metabolism is vital for uh, optimum brain function. Once we understand these facts, we can better understand the findings of each one of these studies and also kind of understand how it can benefit traumatic brain injury, cognitive function, and also benefits to neurological disorders and disease. Let's go ahead and cover a few of these here. Uh, first, prevention of complication related to TBI in children with creatine administration. So what this study did was for six months uh, post-traumatic brain injury, uh, children were supplemented with 0.4 grams per kg of body weight. And after the six months, they did a series of tests in amnesia or post-traumatic uh, injury amnesia, communication, sociability, reaction tests, so on and so forth. And what they found was that after the six months of supp uh, supplementation with creatine, the children responded, had a much better, uh, had a great effect from being supplemented with creatine. Every single one of these measures improved compared to non-supplemented group groups in the past. So again, this goes to show that even post-traumatic brain injury, creatine can have a great effect in its recovery. Second, we'll go ahead and look at Sullivan and colleagues. It's important to note here that Rats have a, there's been a lot of studies done on rats in uh, creatine supplementation prior to brain injury. And this is because we cannot guess when a brain injury is gonna happen in a human, nor are we gonna do a controlled brain injury in a human for obvious reasons. So what Sullivan and colleagues did was they supplemented rats with 1% of creatine four weeks prior to a traumatic brain injury and found that the rats that were supplemented uh, demonstrated 50% less cortical damage than those that were unsupplemented, which goes to show there can be some validity to taking a creatine supplement prior to traumatic brain injury as well. Let's go ahead and look in the back of the board for the last one I want to present today. Did not have enough room on the front. There we go. All right, awesome. So the effects of creatine supplementation and sleep deprivation with mild exercise. So what this study did was seven days prior to sleep deprivation, there's two groups, placebo group and uh, supplemented group. The supplemented group took five grams of creatine per day, seven days prior to the sleep deprivation. They went through 24 hours of sleep deprivation, then did a series of tests afterwards, similar to uh, the study previous to last, the first one we covered, except these tests were a little more geared on physical qualities such as um, reaction time, balance, um, mood, and uh, other things of this nature, seeing how creatine affects cognitive function after sleep deprivation. And again, each one of these measures improved significantly compared to the non-supplemented group, which goes to show that even when we look at cognitive function and sleep deprivation, creatine can be very useful. I think that about covers it for this topic. That's Brandon Morgan signing out.